Hi everybody, I hope you're good today. Welcome to our online class of philosophy. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, but most of all, I hope you could learn something meaningful about this theory. So first of all, as you can remember, last class we wrote some notes about this theory, but we couldn't explain them. So today we are going to, to learn about this theory and I'm going to explain it for you. Um, first of all, I have to say that as we are talking about the philosophy of language, today we are going to talk about a specific thing that is that belong to this theory called Fido Fido theory. And that is the relation between the words and the real world. And also the words, the language with the real world. So we are going to start. I hope you could understand me. So we are going to start now. So it's Fido Fido characteristics. I'm going to talk about them, but I'm going to explain it for, uh, for you with some examples. So please pay attention and we are going to start now. So the first characteristic say that Fido is, a, uh, is, a, is an entity designated by the name of Fido. So that means that Fido is something, but Fido could be whatever. Uh, in, the, in the theory, the philosophers say that Fido, for example, could mean uh, the existence of an, a specific animal. So, for example, you have a dog and you name it Fido. And Fido is designated by the name Fido, by the, by the word Fido. But uh, as we have talked, as we have talked, that name could design also different things. For example, a house. A house couldn't be called house and could be called Fido. So, for example, this is not a house, now this is a Fido, and we are going to understand it as a Fido, and we are going to talk about this as a Fido. So, when you are at your home, you don't say, I'm, a, I'm at home, you just say, I'm at Fido. But it could be something different also. It could be a car, and it could be this dog. So, the thing that I want you to understand uh, is that the word, the words, are just artificial names that we put to the things. So Fido is an entity designed by name Fido. And we think that entity is ex exactly the same. So Fido could be a home, a house, could be a dog, and could be a car. But Fido also could be different things because remember that the words name things of the real world. But the things of the real world are not, are not just material things like this dog, like this house, or like this heart, like, like this car. Things, real things, also could be like emotions and feelings and all that, those things that we can touch that doesn't have a, a, mat a, a matter on them. So, for example, we could say, we usually say, I, I love you, I love somebody, uh, he or she loves me, whatever. But we could say, we could change that word and say, Fido uh, and no love. So, for example, we could name the feeling of love, Fido. And I could say, I Fido you, because it's just a word that we create to express something, as we have learned before. So Fido, the, the words also, the sing, the sing uh, no material things like emotions, for example, the feeling of love or the emotion of being sad or happy or angry or whatever, is just another name that we use to understand the other and to be part to the world. But also Fido, also has to be with action as re, uh, Fido is related to action and to orders and to laws and whatever. So the word stop. If I want you to do something, I have to share with you a code and a meaning. So for example, 
we invented the word stop and that means that you have to stop something that you are doing that you have to do different thing a different thing that the thing that you are doing in this moment so if i tell you stop talking you understand me that you have to uh, stop talking and that from your mouth is not going to be more words but that is going to that could be something different and also could be fido so that's why the example and this theory is called fido fido because fido could be different things so remember this part fido is an entity but it could be whatever whatever you want it could be a house it could be an emotion or a car and whatever but we design it to something so from now just think that you have a dog and your dog is your dog's name is fido and you know it as fido so <clears throat> we continue talking about the fido about fido as an entity so remember that we could use whatever word we could we want but we use some words you you can say like for example this is a car or this is a mother because people are going to think that you are mad because we share some meanings and those meanings let us to be part of a society and let us to have a relation with the other so please remember that we could use whatever or whichever word we want but we use some some specific words so we share the meaning of those words and we belong to a meaningful a meaning circle so the thing is that we could use whatever we want but we use this the word fido or fido lies if you want the word house and we we can change it just because we want because you would be like crazy or whatever and the word car that name a car and you understand when someone say car or when someone uh, uh, say house or when you call your dog fido and also your dog is going to to pay attention to you if you use that word okay and the other characteristic that we should know about this theory says this in this theory the meaning is not different from the thing name that's why the meaning of a full sentences depends on the addition of the meanings of its components so the thing is that in this theory the meaning is not different from the thing name so what does it mean that means that when you say a word you express the meaning that you wanted to express and that word is exactly the same that to say dog for example let me show you something i have okay this this scissors these scissors are the same thing that to say scissors so if i hide them and i say scissor on your brain is going to be that image so for example let's make let's make the exercise i say the word scissor what do you remember i i know that maybe you are thinking about the scissor that i just showed you and that happened with this so to say the words is kind of the same thing that to express the things itself so if you say house you know that is a house you are not saying a word you are expressing something you are naming something so to the the word house is the same thing that the house that you are naming naming so pay attention because this is an important thing the the uh, other part of this sentence say that that's why the meaning of a full sentence depends on the addition of the meanings of its components and 
That means that when you use a sentence, when you compose a sentence with different words, the meaning of that sentence depends on the meaning of the words that you are using. So let me show you an example. This is a sentence. So the meaning of, a, of full sentences, forget this A please and just say full sentences, depend on the addition of the meaning of its components. So for example, the house, the house's dog is waiting for the red car. In Spanish that means el perro de la casa está esperando por el carro rojo. I don't know, maybe his owner arrives on that car or, or whatever. I don't know. So the thing is that there is a sentence. But when I talk about this, this house, this dog, and uh, red car, we refer to something that we know. In this case, we could refer house to the house that I showed you, dog to the dog that I just showed you, and red car to the car that I just showed you. That means that we have a reference, and that's how the language works in the real life. The language has a lot of reference, so when you say a word, you are meaning something, and that's, that's why other people can understand you. But those words are the words that has the meaning. So house refers to something, maybe your home, maybe your grandmother's home, maybe this home that I'm just showing you. Dog, the same, and the same with red car. So the meaning of this sentence depends on the meaning of each word, uh, each important word. And that's how the language works. But most of all, that's how the that's how we use the language to mean something to others but that's now for that's that's all for for today i am going to end talking about something this is a theory that be, that believe these things that the words express the things that they name but most of all that the words are exactly the, the exactly meaning of the things that the words are naming. So we need to think about this, how the words, how the words express reference that we have in real life. But to conclude, I want to tell you that this is a theory. So this is the basis for uh, critics that some philosophers did about this that create the philosophy of language and that that create also the linguistic term that we talk about. The next presentation, I'm going to talk about the, those problems because the most important part of this are the problems that philosophers found to this because philosophers are going to say that the things are not like this, that are going to be different. So for now, I think it's okay. Uh, Sorry if I have some mistakes, but I know that I explain these things very well. I hope you understand it. But if you don't, please let me know on the comments or or, or write, write a message for me. So let me know if you don't understand and I would love to help you. Goodbye, my dear students. Have a nice weekend.